Hi YouTube, Neil here with Face Lift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. Now this week's video is a requested video by a subscriber, I hope, about how to reupholster some dining seat pads, but in fabric. We've done a video on this previously. Last summer it was very bloody hot, I hope you remember. But they were in vinyl, and these ones are gonna be in fabric. So on this video, we're gonna reupholster two sets of dining pads to show you two different ways to do the corners. So on one, it's got a shape, a little dip in. So I'll show you how we do that. There's no real pleats on the side, the pleats go underneath. And then on the other ones, the pleats go on top. So I'm gonna show you how I tuck tuck it all round, cut out all the excess, and do a nice finished pleat. This is a great video for beginners. There's lots of tips and tricks in it, so you can follow this if you want to upholster your own dining pads at home. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you see when the next video becomes available. Also, please don't forget to follow us over on Instagram. We're always putting up our finished work on there, doing lots of little tips and tricks during the week. We haven't been recently, but we are gonna get back onto it. So don't forget to follow us over on Instagram, which is, that side? I think it's that side. <laughs> Side. So without further ado, this is how you reupholster some dining seat pads in fabric and how you do the corners. Action! Right, so in this week's video, we're going to be showing you how to do some dining seat pads. And I know we've already done a video on dining seat pads, but these ones are, these are going to be done in fabric and we're going to put pleats. So you see the shapes here on these corners, so that it sort of dips in. Just going to show you how we do that. So I'll show you how we strip it down and how we're going to pad it. So this is one that I've already done. So what I've done here is, underneath is like a yellow foam, which is original, which is okay. A lot of the time I have to replace the foam when I'm doing dining seat pads, but on these ones, the foam was actually okay. So what I've done is I've, I've left the normal foam on, then I've put half inch foam over the top, then I'm gonna do a thick layer of Dacron over the top of that, and it's gonna come to there, because it depends on the job, really. You really gotta sort of suss out what you're doing, and if you've got an allowance, because sometimes I run the foam down to there, so I'll fold it over to there, to this bottom part here, so it'll curve over, so it'll give a nice rounded edge. But on these ones, I know that it's very tight. When I took these dining pads out, they were very hard to get out, and that was with not any padding in it at all. So all I'm gonna allow is Dacron to go into that gap there so I know I can get the dining pads back in. Because if I put the half inch all the way down to the bottom, I know that I'm not gonna get these back in. Yes, yeah, so I've left the original foam on, put another layer of half inch over the top, which is a really good form of padding. And then, whoa, and then um, we're gonna put the Dacron on top of that. I'm just gonna show you how we strip this one down. So first of all, I mean, whoever done this before, the customer did say to me that they done a, made a pig's ear of it. I mean, you haven't even used a proper staple gun to start, so that's not a good start. So on the last one, we went around with the staple lifter, but this one, this time, I'm gonna show you how we use our multi-tool. Oh, my flies are down. Excuse me. So this is our Bosch multi-tool. Great bit of kit. What I'm gonna do is just run around with this and just chop all the staples out, so. You can see here the original fabric is still on there. So it's like a vinyl before, like a cream vinyl. So we're going underneath that as well and just chopping these staples out. So, to be fair there, Dacron number four. See what the previous upholster has done, gone straight over the top of the old fabric. Right, so there's our original dining pad. I'm gonna stick some more glue. on there. Well, I've got this bit of half inch blue foam here. So I'm just gonna glue that on. Now all I'm gonna do is bring this to the edge of the table and cut off the excess. So that's our dining pad with new half inch pad padding on top. So now we've got our Dacron. Right, now what I'm gonna do is just glue the sides as well and the back. What I'm going to do is bring that Dacron over there like so, just cutting off more than I need. So pushing the sides up so they sit over the wooden edge because I don't want fabric rubbing on a bare wooden edge. Now we're just going to cut off the excess Dacron that we don't need. And on the corners, snip away the excess. Now that is ready for fabric. So I'm gonna get my loose tape, my soft tape, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna come round here, make sure I've got enough here. And this is the widest point of the chair, as you can see the pad, the widest point is at the front. So that is 
24 side to side. We're going to do exactly the same front to back. 22 front to back. So allowing a little bit there and a little bit at the front. Well, so now we can start cutting our fabric. All right, so now we've got our measurement, 24 front to back, 22 side to side. We're only going to need four of them. So I've worked it out. So it's basically four equal panels. Right, so I'm just going to mark the fronts as well. You can either mark the front or the top just so the weaves all go in the same way. So when you put them on, you know which way they're all going. So it's one, two, three, four. Well, I'm also gonna cut the bottoms now. So we're gonna go 18, 18 by 20. So I'm just gonna take that and copy it four times. I'll just mark that as well, front. I'm gonna lay out our panel. So remember that's our front and that's our front as well. So if you want to, you can mark the front so what I like to do is, and I'd advise this as a good tip, one temporary there. Now I'm going to pull as tight as I can to the back. So I'm pulling all that forward. So that's that. Now I'm going to do the sides. So I'm going to pull over here. So what I did went from the middle. You can see there where I've pulled the front really tight. So from here, I'm just going to pull from the middle up over here, nice and tight and get one in there. And then likewise, over the other side. So, as you can see, that is pulled in front to back, side to side. So, I can see there that that weave is relatively straight. So, what you want to do now is start working your way around. I'm just going to run my hand up and over, and like I've shown you before, use my finger and thumb to hold that fabric there. Put them staples in. Now, with this fabric, you want to be very careful. With all fabrics you want to be careful but with this one you want to make sure your weave stays straight because on this it's got a pattern on this fabric you want to make sure it stays straight if it goes curved you will notice so just make sure it stays straight keep an eye on that so like i did earlier pull that up and over all right so that's the front so i've left about two inches from the end now i'm going to do that all the way around so now we're going to come to the back nice and tight So pull in nice and tight towards the back. All right, so that is all the, all the sides stapled down. So now we come to our curved corners, right? So you can see here, as you can see there, there's a shape. I'm gonna put a pleat either side of that. So what I'm gonna do is finish working my way up to the corner. So now what I'm gonna do so I'm going to pull nice and tight right there. You can see that. Now, we don't even need to have a pleat on the top. We can just have a pleat on the bottom like that and the same over this side. And it's good. And like so, that is done. So we didn't even need to put any pleats on the corners there. So that is probably gonna be the same all the way round. Right, so now we're onto the final corner. So we're just gonna pull that up there, get a staple in there. Then I can go that way, staple, staple. And then this side, so I can get rid of all of this, cut rid of all that excess fabric because by doing that you can see how much you're going to need i'm not going to need anywhere near that much and one two done so i'm just going to cut this excess off so i just wanted to give you another example of a dining pad with a pleat on the top here I'm doing this blue dining pad, pulling down nice and tight in the corners. Now I'm, I'm dressing my pleats where I want it to be. And when you do that, you can see look all that excess fabric that you can cut away because you don't want it too bulky in the corners. So what I'm doing is I'm getting my scissors, I'm cutting away the excess that I don't need. Now you put a staple in. 
just a bit further back than the corner because you don't want it to sit on the corner you want to hide that staple with the pleat now I'm dressing again turning the fabric under and cutting away just to maneuver the fabric now using a regulator or blunt tool tuck all your fabric in cut away all your excess that you don't need still now using my staple lifter which is fairly blunt just tucking in all the fabric getting rid of any little pleats or wrinkles and staple down and voila that is how you do a pleat on a corner now back onto this one we're doing the bottom in so what I do is I fold it under about half an inch using black bottom in put two staples in the middle then I go to the other side fold that under as well try and make it straight staple the middle then work my way out but don't go all the way to the end and you'll see why go both ways then at the end you've got enough to turn under so you don't have to cut any away now I didn't get a uh, finished shot of the other dining pad but here's this one showing off my nice tidy corners thanks for watching